Good morning, folks. You are looking at new volcanic activity. This can be found at a Natural Phenomena 2013's YouTube channel. We're looking at Kilauea, lava spewing up out of the ground, pooling, running, and eventually diving back down into the cracks. Let's give him or her a big thank you for sharing this. Folks, as I speak, the High Sea team is giving insights into electromagnetic plasma highways on the sun. Can't wait to hear their full results. Giant wave impact in southern India. 10 to 15 foot waves are inundating homes and villages. Meanwhile, across the planet, the Tungurahua volcano in Ecuador appears to be building pressure and also appears to be plugged. That's how the champagne bottle pops and you get a major eruption. It's a little late to get out of the way, but just in case anyone watching here is not ready for Typhoon Rumbia, she's arrived. South of Mexico, the coastlines can tell there is a storm afoot, but we likely will not see terrible conditions make landfall here. Lone area identified as rain likely two days ago is facing complication as the rain will try to move on tonight and meet New Zealand. Europe got a slight cool down atop the UK, otherwise just lightning in the Mediterranean. Good news everyone, says the professor from Futurama, but seriously the low south of Alaska has finally been squashed. Literally, squashed. The rainmaker off the US west coast is now just a thin blob and we avoid that sustained rain event known as an arc storm. Pressure hasn't changed much, we still got cooler air rushing down the central states, but we are less likely to see widespread storms tonight. Took a gamma ray burst this morning from Andromeda. If you can see the moon today, Andromeda will be just north of it in the skies. Flaring is still hugging the floor, we continue to develop on the north as she swings out of Earth's view. Her oppositely polarized umbras are getting closer together. But the sunspot story today is cresting the southeastern limb. You can barely see the outlines on the magnetogram or intensity gram, but 171 angstroms from the SDO reveals the magnetic loops foreshadowing her arrival. Remember, the sunspots are where the magnetic fields inside the sun emerge through the photosphere, capturing plasma and charged particles in the magnetic field and guiding them along these lines. If they interact or twist or become energized, they can snap, causing a solar flare. This process is better explained along with the rest of this material that might seem like gibberish if you just got here in the video, How to Watch the Sun. Meanwhile, the KP index is on the decline. We did take the CME impact yesterday, but it was very, very minor, barely even perceptible on the solar wind data. The speedier particles of the coronal hole stream were the story, and they did peak over 600 kilometers per second. Electron flux continues to rise, and that energetic flux is complemented by the geocentric conjunction of Venus and Ceres 1 today, while Earth heliocentrically conjoins Pluto. Both of those could be complemented soon by this large northern coronal hole. Umbral field is still closed, but the left edge does appear to be opening our way. Only one five-pointer in the last 24 hours. It was near Antarctica. Still only one major quake in two weeks. We're overdue and have the potential for all three quake factors to be present in the next 24 to 48 hours. Tell you what, I'll hope for continued quiet and Earth seismicity. You just enjoy these shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.